Welcome to Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max. We have one of the nicest MCs in the game joining me all the way from Chicago. He's really one of the realest in the game. You got the Patience album dropping August 18th, available on all platforms. Go check out Smoke Breakdance, Guapanese available right now. Mick Jenkins, how are you doing, man? How's everything going? I'm pretty good, man. How you doing? Doing well. Guapanese, a strong message right there. I love how you're calling out all the posers that have the ones behind the 20. <laughs> nah, man, I think, you know what? That's crazy, actually. Um, That bar was about, you know, you know how you stack the money and you make it look like you got racks, but, you know, it's really a stack. stack of, you know, so, but like, you know how many rappers use fake money? It's insane. Like, it's way more than you would think. You feel me? Like, so it's just like, yeah, it's concerning. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I appreciate you spotlighting that joint, man. I think it's uh it's just it's that simple. Um, and it's why I scream it and it's why I leave space in between each line, because it's just like I'm not necessarily calling out individuals. The whole industry is focused on money. Singularly. Like it's it's how even we um choose who to invest in, right? the 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 immediate scooping up of an artist that has some virality and then immediately putting them on like some of the biggest stages ever you feel me like has has a direct it's it's because of what we believe they can sell it's not because of them earning their dues it's not because we think they necessarily deserve to be in that spot other than someone who thinks deserve is based on how much money we can make you feel me? Like, and I think that's the whole industry. There's symptoms of it. We see it. We feel it. I think we've been talking about a change. All a change is coming for the last 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, not much is going to change about needing to make money in this arena. And I think that's 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 what the song's about. And that's what that's what the industry's about, by and large, on the on the mainstream scale. Exactly. And the industry is being exposed now on all time because you see all the strikes that are going on and the writer's yeah. strike, the actor strike. So the, the these creatives aren't making what they're worth anymore. It's just not happening. Facts. Um, so that's where the song, that's definitely where the inspiration came from. The piano is nice. Yeah. And I just thought, they, they say money talk, huh? All right, well, let's let's look at that. You feel me? Like, let's look at how money talks. Like, and uh, came out with a great record, man. Yeah. Oh, oh, you definitely did. And and I go back to you with the waters because when I look at certain records with Jerome and Black Sheep, those are my two favorites from you. So I'm Appreciate looking it. forward to seeing what you're really going to put forth here because you were unhappy in your previous deal. You were RBC under BMG right now. Yeah. I heard about the whole situation at Cinematic. You didn't you didn't own about fifty percent of your masters. You, you weren't messing with the people who were around you, and you weren't going on tour doing these interviews for a project. Now all that's going to change. You're happy. <laughs> What was the reason why you couldn't get out of your contract? Because once you're signed, there's no way you could breach that contract. Because I learned well, heard different stories. Remember with Snoop Dogg, with Master P, and him getting out of the death row deal. I've heard about certain things, but it's 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 the it's both parties. It's both parties. We got to come to an agreement there. You could definitely get out for sure, but you don't get out of just like your lease. You know what I'm saying? It's like I've had landlords who will let me out my lease early. I've had landlords who would be like, yeah, but I need you to do this. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know. Maybe I might just stay the extra four months. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all that we can always rescind the deal, but both parties got to agree. And we couldn't agree on how we would exit. You feel me? So I ended up having to finish it out. It wasn't a terrible deal. It wasn't what I needed. It wasn't what I deserved. And I didn't know that when I signed it. You know, you, you, you think you need a certain thing when you don't understand what you need. You feel me? Like, you don't know what you need for the NBA. It don't matter how good you are. You never played here before. You got something to learn. LeBron had things to learn. Kobe had things to learn. Mike had things to learn. You don't show up here and know everything. That's the same thing in this arena. It doesn't matter how good you are. It don't matter who you with. If you ain't never been a career rapper, you got a lot to learn. No matter who you with, no matter what you do, no matter how good you are, no matter how high your single charted you know what i'm saying like you got a lot to learn and so um that's the space that i was coming from of just like you know 
My fault. What was your question again? I just want to make sure I could get, I'd be trailing off. Oh, okay, yeah, it was just uh, how come you couldn't breach the contract because we've seen what's happened with Snoop Dogg yeah, and getting yeah. out of the death row deal to get to Master P. Yeah, and so once I learned that I couldn't get out, um, I just sat and, like, plotted for what would happen once I finished. Like, that's why, like you said, wasn't so much videos, wasn't so much content, wasn't so much anything because I was just like, I'm just biding my time until I get out of here, and then I'm going to take off. And now I feel bad because it's just such a miserable situation. And and I'm sure there's plenty of artists who are going through the same thing right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm not even saying it to get like any type of sympathy is or any way. It's just like, cause you're right. It's a common thing, bro. Yeah. It's a common thing. And I think it, like I say that, I think it has a lot to do with that learning curve. It's just like knowing even what to look out for is not always so clear. There's some obvious things to look out for, but then there's some things that's not so obvious that you just have to learn by trial and error. And so um, I think that's what anything though, like I, that's why I use the basketball metaphor. I think that's a part of becoming um, sustainable in an industry. You know what I'm saying? Like um, learning and growing pain and making mistakes and perfecting shit. I think that's just a part of the process. So um but in the process, once you overcome that, I think that's when some of the best stuff can come forward. So, um, like you said, you know, just being happy, um, feeling good about the people that I have around me, feeling good about the direction that we're heading in, um, it just makes the space for us, for you to focus on what you really want to focus on. It makes a space where you don't have to worry on things that you shouldn't have to worry about. And overall, at the end, the product is much better for it. And that's why I really feel great about this album. I'm looking forward to it. The patience, because you've been patient this whole time. You've been waiting for your moment. You got the merch on the way. You got the instrumental vinyls. You're going to be starting to do all these vinyls. You want to tour the States, go to South Africa, Europe. So now's your time. When we look forward here, now that you're under the right deal, you've said that you think that records are going to cost $5,000 someday. So Nipsey was ahead of his time. How are you planning to get to that point where you're going to be selling your records? <laughs> right now? <laughs> Right now, I'm just focused on delivering, you know, quality music at a at a consistent pace. I think that's something that people won't have to worry about as well. It's just, you know, being in a situation where I'm not releasing music for two years again. Um, some of the more lucrative ways that we do that, I don't know, man. I'm I'm, you know, I'm more concerned with just delivering the good art. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Even when I said that about the records, I think that's just like the the perceived value that it would amount to, not like records gonna be costing that much. But uh, yeah, man, I think that's how we get there is making timeless art, um, whether it be merch. I know people waiting on vinyls and physicals, that shit is coming um, by the boatload. Um, I think making moments like that, making things special for people to cherish, I think is how you get there. Um, and I'm excited to be able to do that. Like I said, being able to focus on that early, being able to get stuff like that done and being a part of the process and being able to choose colors and all of that. All of those are freedoms that were allowed to me because of the um, ease of doing business with RBC and the thoroughness of doing business with RBC. So props to them and the creative team that we have coming up with these things. But those are the kind of things you can look forward to that I feel like maybe we were lacking on before because I had to worry about so many other things. Yeah. And, and props to them. You know, they're really doing you justice over here. And I'm looking forward to this album, but you also are recently married. So how much important is it to have that foundation behind the music, such as a wife or someone in your corner to support you throughout your music career? Because I feel as though that's what held you down when going through waiting for where you're at now. Absolutely. Um, that You just said it. You know, I think she's my partner. And that's what we do for each other. We hold each other up. We hold each other down. Um, encourage each other when we feel terrible. When I feel, when you know, and that's the thing. The pay, the album, the patience is about. It's actually about the frustration of waiting. You know, um, the 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 frustration that you feel when you're forced to be patient. I think there's moments where you can choose to be patient, or you can just go force a thing or do a thing. And it's not going to have too much of a negative effect for you to do it like that. And I think there's other moments where it's like, you don't have a choice. 
there's nothing you can do but wait on the things that need to happen. And I think that space can be a very frustrating space, especially for a person like myself who likes to do as much as I can to affect my own situation. So um, having someone in your corner to remind you, to encourage you, to build you up, you know, essential. I think it would have been much harder to do by myself, for sure. Exactly. I did want to ask you this because I know you have the whole poetry background, deaf, deaf poetry jam. You're heavily inspired by that. You're in the poetry club in Chicago and going to college and get inspired by the people you're around. Your mother is also into journalism as well. How much of an appreciation do you have for Tupac? Because I know people will say he's not the most lyrical. I disagree with that. But when I look at Tupac, he is hip hop's poet and you fo- you go right into that lane. How much of an appreciation do you have for Tupac as a poet? I have a great appreciation for Tupac. I don't know that I know his poetry or his rap. Excuse me. <clears throat> that well to speak on it like thoroughly. Um, not a huge fan of Tupac. Um, wow. I'm not like not a fan. Like mm-hmm. I don't listen to his music, but I'm just not a huge fan. And I consider a huge fan to be someone who's knowledgeable. I know the albums. I got favorite songs. Oh, I look this record over this record. I know lyrics. I, that's not my fanhood of Tupac. My fanhood of Tupac is the hit records. You know what I'm saying? And I'm loving it. I'm getting around. You feel me? Like I, I'm digging it wherever I'm hearing it. And that's it. Like, I don't really play Tupac. I wasn't raised. I was raised on Biggie heavy. You know what I'm saying? So Tupac just wasn't a part of my induction and learning of hip hop. That being said, there's absolutely no shade. I don't I don't dislike Tupac or anything like that, just to be clear. You feel me? No, I get it. <laughs> uh, I am one of those people who feels that he's not that lyrical, but that's just one aspect of rap. I think we, I think it's a limiting scope to to just the argument that people make about him and where he resides in greatest rappers of all time because of his lack of lyricism and the way that the other people on the list have it. I don't think that matters as much. You feel me? I think DMX is a super lyrical person, but that's not why we love DMX. And that's not our affinity with DMX was his lyricism. And even in the way that it was unique. And I think that's where you look at Tupac and why he was so polarizing and why he was interested and why we loved him. And I, like you said, it was the poetry. I think he was a very poetic person. Um, he had very poetic music. Um, that that that's who we like you said he was hip hop's poet i believe that i think there's a lot of other people that you could put in that position but um you know i think what poets from what i know hope to do is inspire with their words and i think that is what pop did like nobody else did like no other person that you could put on the list of hip hop's poet has done with the impact that he has impact 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 that he had so <laughs> i i respect that i res- i recognize that and they respect that all the way yeah for yeah. sure I, I know you have the whole neo soul inspiration sade someone that you want to work with i think that would be amazing but you're inspired by fonte little brother yeah. that's I- iconic as we know and then we look at these other artists kanye common when, when martyrs was gaining traction a legend reached out to you which was timbaland could yeah. we get some work with you and timbaland in the future now I I hope not based off that. No, nah, um, our connection kind of fizzled out, but you know, that ain't no, that ain't that's that shit happens. People hit you up, tell you you dope, and that's sometimes that's all they wanted to say. You feel me? Like, uh, so hopefully that happens. If not, it's cool. You know, I ain't had no connection with them since that. Since that, so yeah. And you got a lot on the way here, and just learning about relationships in this industry because I learned that Smino was the one that you love to feed off of his energy and just seeing how he works, you'd pull up to the studio just to see. Oh yeah, I said that on the line, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's only a few people like that, you know, and that's not a knock to everybody else, but you know, um, I'm inspired by life. I'm inspired by experiences. And I think uh, the people, the artists that inspire me the most purely by their process of creation, I think that's really unique. And um, yeah, Smino is one of those guys for sure, Saba is one of those guys. Um, my guy, Brian Allen Lamb, actually, who's a photographer, is one of those guys. Very different medium, but again, what we're looking for is inspiration. What we're talking about is inspiration, and that can come from anywhere. So, With this album, The Patience, because something that you were stressing to work on was to say a little without having to say a lot. 
Mm-hmm. Did, did this album prep you for that? Were you able to accomplish that goal? I think that's a working perspective. I don't think that's somewhere I arrive at. Uh, I think that's something that I'm always, um, it's a, a literary device, I should say. Um, it's something that I can choose to do or work at doing when I'm trying to tell a story or when I'm trying to uh, get my point across or not. Um, I have more of a focus on that recently just because I find that I can be really wordy. I, I am a lyricist. I can wrap circles around, you know, just about one topic, I feel. So um, I was just recognizing the power in that. There's, there's a lot of power in being able to um, deliver a message that is so weighted um, with one line or with one word. So I just want to work at that. I think I see that as a place that I could work at, a ability that I could work at more. And I'm always trying to hone my craft. So. Where's this album going to rank when we look at the patience? Where's this going to rank for you in your discography when we look back on I it? Just, I just said this. I was like, I think people are going to say this is my best album. Mm. Um, I think it's, I don't know yet. I think it's in the top three for sure. That's how I feel. Uh, the other two for me are Pieces of a Man and Elephant in the Room. <laughs> I think everybody thinks The Waters is the best right now, but that's not, I don't think The Waters is my best work. I think it's Pieces of a Man or Elephant in the Room. I have, I'm not really decided, but I do believe that people are going to, I think by far, people are going to say this is my best album. I believe it. And it's been a long time coming. You have a lot on the way now. You're ready to see the full effects, as you said in the past, of what, yeah. what's to really happen and putting forth the work. And we're going to see it, man. You're one of the best in the game. No doubt about it. Appreciate you. I, I have a great respect for you, man, what you do for hip-hop. We need more MCs like you, and, and you're really going to be representing. Love, bro. Thank you. Of course, man. Mick Jenkins, thank you for coming on the show. You're always welcome. Shout out to Sean for setting us up at Cosign. And everyone else who put this into place, man, you're always welcome on the show. The patience will be in my rotation. Go we'll pre-order it, download it, support this man. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you. Let them know they can follow you on Instagram, Twitter, all that, so they get tapped in with you. Uh, Mick Jenkins, M Y C K J E N K I N S, everywhere. Uh, much love. Appreciate y'all for listening. Shout out DJ Man Max. Appreciate I appreciate you, Mick Jenkins. Keep going, all right? Yes, sir. Peace out, man.